This teaching is about uh, word curses. One of the bad roots that binds many people, uh, the hook that people has in their heart, is because of word curses. Uh, it's when they have been cursed or have been insulted, bad words spoken to them when they were children. Uh, it may have been a curse using the name of God, a curse using the name of, of the devil, or of another supposed deity or God. It can be belittling remarks, put-downs, insults. Uh, remember that Proverbs 18.21 says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Let me see what time it is, for gosh sakes. 33. Uh, and in Jeremiah 9.8, it says that uh, words are like an arrow that is shot. And, and it mentions in Psalm 57.4 people whose teeth are spears and arrows and many other words like that. In other words, uh, the words that people speak can be blessings or curses. Uh, remember that, that God spoke to his own son, Jesus, in, at the, uh, when, the, when, he was, when the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove and said, you are my beloved son with, with whom I am well pleased. Uh, God has given us an example of how a father and mother should bless their children. But many parents do not bless their children. They curse their children. And these are some of the words that people have told me that were spoken to them when they were children. Words like, you're, you're no good, you're, you're dumb. Even little children, were, were, they're told, you're, you're bad, you're dumb, you're ugly. Uh, uh, a man said that when he was nine years old, his, uh, he was playing soccer with a team, and he missed a goal. He missed scoring, and he heard his father's voice very loud saying, Oh, he's stupid. Well, that, that was a curse. See, that's a word that penetrated his heart and had an effect on him. Uh, words like, you're, you're a failure, you're a loser, you're an idiot. Uh, a man said when his, when his mother was, was upset with him, angry with him, she would tap him on the head with her knuckles, which hurt, or would pinch him and say, and, and say you idiot. And she did that many, many times. And those words wounded his heart. Or words like, you can't do anything right. You, you're just like your father. You're going to be a, a, a drunkard. You're going to end up in prison. See, these are curses. And, and when they're spoken by parents to their children, they have demonic power. See, they're like an arrow shot from the devil. I, I believe that, that, the, that the devil can use people's mouth to curse people, and, and God can and does use people's mouth to bless people. See, you, you remember that one of Jesus' disciples that, that the devil used his mouth. Uh, uh, the devil used Simon Peter to try to tempt Jesus not to go to the cross, which was the will of his father. And Jesus turned to him and said, Get behind me, Satan. You see, it was Satan speaking through the voice of Simon Peter. And these words that we speak are very important to God. Remember that in Matthew 5, 21 and 20. Two, Jesus said, whoever insults his brother is liable to punishment. Whoever says, you fool, you, empty, you, you idiot, is liable to, to hell fire. And in Matthew 12, 36 and 37, Jesus said that we will give an account when we stand in judgment for every idle word that we say. And he said, for by your words you will be justified. In other words, saved and by your or by your words you will be condemned now those are very that's a very serious teaching by Jesus Matthew 12 36 and 37 he said we'll give an account for every word we speak for by your words you will be justified and by your or by your words you will be condemned and and in Matthew 12 33 to 37, Jesus teaches that, that good fruit and bad fruit have to do with the words we speak. 
And I've already read in the last teaching, uh, Luke 6, 43 uh, to 45, where Jesus said, A good tree has good fruit and a bad tree bad fruit, for out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. So our words are very important to God. Uh, I was recently, just uh, three or four weeks ago, I'm still here in Mexico, and we were ministering in a church, a young man, had a sling on his left arm. His, his arm was injured, and he had a, a bandage around his arm. And he said, uh, uh, he said, after listening to this teaching, he said, now I understand what happened to me. He was a guard in a building, and he and four other guards were walking through the building, and one of the guard dogs, a big, big dog, he said, suddenly it growled and it leaped at him. He didn't know why. He held his left arm up and it, it grasped his left arm with its teeth. And it took those other four men five minutes to get this dog loose from his arm. And uh, he, said, uh, he said, I didn't know why that dog attacked me. But he said, now after hearing this teaching, I understand. He said, just before I left home, my mother cursed me and then he went to work and that dog attacked him in the midst of five men so you can see the power that a curse has so I had him forgive his mother and I prayed for his arm to be healed to, to break the curse now there, there's two steps in in ministering to healing to for people who have been cursed the first is to have them forgive and repent of judgments and honor their father and mother if it was their father or mother that cursed them. And the second step is to break that curse. The, that Those words that were spoken is a curse with demonic power. And uh, please write this scripture down. Galatians 3.13 says that Christ became a curse for us for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. So by the authority of Christ, we, we can break the power of word curses. So I had this man say, I forgive my mother, etc. And in the name of Jesus, who became a curse for me, I break word curses for my life. And then I prayed for healing for his arm. Uh, he, he fell under the power of the Spirit of God. I know that God touched him, and I, I believe that, that his arm was healed. We ministered to a, a lady over 50 years old here in Mexico two years ago. And uh, we were praying with her, and, and I said to her, God loves you. And she said, how can God love me when I'm stupid? And I said, why do you think you're stupid? And she said, my mother always said, you're stupid. Now, just think about this, that. This, this lady was over 50 years old. Those words had been spoken to her when she was a child growing up in her mother's home. So they had been spoken, you know, 40, 45 years before. But they had such demonic power that they affected her every day of her life. She did not think that God could love her because she was too stupid. You see, she had been wounded by the rejection and the curses of her mother. Her heart had been wounded. The wound had not been healed. There were sins connected to that wound. She had unforgiveness and bitterness toward her mother. She'd never repented of, of that sin of unforgiveness. And there were lies connected to that wound. She believed the, that the lie that her mother spoke, that she was stupid... And it had been twisted in her mind, I'm sure by the devil, so that she thought that God could not even love her because she was stupid. So the way we ministered to her was first to have her forgive her mother for rejection, for her, for her hurtful words and actions and attitudes, to repent for judging her mother, to say, I honor my mother, and then to say, by the authority of Christ, who became a curse for me, Galatians 3.13, I break that word curse my mother spoke. And then I, I broke generational curses and had her renounce the devil, 
renounce the spirit of, of uh, curses over her life and cast these spirits out of her and prayed for her heart to be healed. And then I gave her post-ministry instructions, the way to overcome these words. See, we had, we had done spiritual surgery on her heart. Now we needed to put the braces on her teeth, put the braces on her heart and instruct her in how to resist the devil because he will come back again and again and whisper into her mind, you're stupid, God doesn't love you until she takes spiritual authority and resists those words and, and draws near to God and uses the, the armor of God and the, 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 the sword of the Spirit to defeat the devil so that he will stop uh, attacking her in this way. I ministered to a 16-year-old boy in a city called Cuernavaca, Mexico. Uh, the mother brought the, the boy uh, uh, and said, Will you pray for him? He's tormented with thoughts and temptations of homosexuality. He, uh, he's tempted by these thoughts. He dreams about homosexuality. And men are always uh, approaching him to try to, for him to try to be a homosexual, a homosexual. And he's never committed this sin. And then she said, the father has abandoned us. But he always said to the boy, you're going to be a homosexual. Now that was a curse. And I mentioned in the, in the last lesson that one of the reasons that, that uh, people become homosexuals is because of word curses. And this is an example of that. This father cursed his son by saying, you're going to be a homosexual. And those words spoken by a father have spiritual power. See, he's really, he's a mouthpiece for the devil. He's allowing the devil to speak a curse to attack this boy and destroy his life. Now, I need to ask, first of all, why would a father do such a terrible thing to curse his own son in this way? Well, that's a bad fruit. I know that I've never seen the father, but I know that he has bad roots. What, what could be the bad roots in a father that he would curse his son? Well, either, in my, in my opinion, either the father, he was treated the same way. His father or his family may have cursed him and said the same things to him. Or second, and what I consider even more likely, is that the father was probably uh, uh, molested sexually as a boy or as a teenager by someone, perhaps many times, and this corrupted and polluted his heart and his life. He was filled with hatred and with self-hatred. He was filled with spirits of perversion and homosexuality himself. And so because he was filled with, with self-hate, uh, people attack their own children, especially a, a child of their own sex. And so he, because he was filled with self-hatred, he had this bad root in his own heart. He attacks his own son in this way. So that's a demonstration. That, those are two examples or three examples of people who, who, have been, who have been cursed and how you minister to them to break this curse over their life. And then the other, uh, the other side of the coin, the other truth that is very important is when, when we have cursed others, it brings a curse back on us. In Psalm 109, verses 17 and 18. This is a psalm of David, and uh, David is speaking about a particular man who had been cursing him. David was the king of Israel at that time. And David said about that man that those curses were going to return to that man and enter his body like water and enter his bones like oil. Now, while this was written by David about a particular man, I have learned that it is a universal spiritual principle. When you curse someone else, that curse returns to you and enters your body like water and your bones like oil. And, and in my uh, experience, 
when curses come back and enter a person in that fashion, enter their bones where the red blood cells are manufactured, this affects their health. It can cause uh, bone cancer and many other terrible diseases. And there are other examples in Scripture where when someone spoke a curse, the curse came back against them. For instance, when uh, uh, King Balak uh, hired Balaam, to uh, uh, he was the king of the Moabites, king of Moab, and he hired uh, a prophet named, a false prophet named Balak to curse the nation of Israel. Well, the curse came back against the nation of Moab and against uh, Balak, this false prophet, and he was destroyed. I was ministering to a faithful Christian woman, maybe she was 50 or 55 years old, in a city in Mexico, and she told, the reason she wanted prayer was that when she tried to pray or read her Bible or attended worship in church, she heard blasphemous words against God in her mind. She heard words cursing God. Well, that's a bad fruit. So I want to know what the bad root is. And since I've had many years of experience with these, with these principles, I asked her, have you ever cursed God? And she said, uh, she said yes, several times. She was raised in a very uh, abusive home, and she blamed God, and she cursed God as she was growing up. And I said, uh, you know, God, it was not God's will that, that your parents treated you like that. It grieved God's heart, but cursing God is a very serious sin. In the Old Testament, uh, when, if someone cursed God, the penalty was death by stoning. So I had her say, Heavenly Father, please forgive me for cursing you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry that I did that. I, I repent. I renounce those words. And the moment she said that, she said she saw or sensed something black leaving her head, leaving the top of her head. It was a demonic spirit from the devil. This spirit of, see, when she cursed God, that spirit came back to her and it entered her. And the consequence was whenever she tried to draw near to God through prayer or Bible reading or worship, she heard these words in her mind. So she had to specifically repent of that sin and renounce those words and then she was set free. Uh, many times when I'm, a number of times I've been ministering to people and they will, while I'm counseling with them or praying with them, their mouth or their tongue or their throat will become numb or paralyzed. And I've learned that when some part of a person's body is affected during ministry, this is a clue from the Holy Spirit. See, the, the Holy Spirit's involved in this ministry. He's leading this ministry. If he wasn't doing it, I couldn't do it. Nobody could do it. It's God setting people free. So he helps and, and guides during times of ministry. So if someone's mouth or tongue becomes paralyzed or numb, I ask them, have you ever cursed anyone? Because this is very serious to God. He wants people set free from this. And a number of occasions they've said, yes, I cursed my father or my mother. Uh, and I will say, well, you know, that's a very serious sin to God. Uh, uh, even Jesus is quoted in Mark 7.10 when, when he was talking, I think, to the Pharisees. And he told them that, that the sin of cursing your father and mother... Was the penalty was death by stoning, just the same as cursing God. See, the fifth commandment says, honor your father and mother, and the penalty for, for cursing uh, your father and mother was, was death. So this is very serious to God. Uh, of course, Jesus took the penalty for all our sins upon himself on the cross. The reason that the penalty for breaking God's laws for you and I is not death still is because Jesus took that penalty upon himself and through faith in him and repenting of our sins we can be set free from the penalty 
So I have people when their mouth or tongue becomes paralyzed and they say they've cursed their father or mother to say, I repent, Lord, please forgive me for cursing my father or mother. I renounce those words. And in every case, immediately the paralysis or the numbness leads, leaves their tongue or their mouth. I heard a testimony of a woman uh, who developed tumors and, and cancers in her breasts. And uh, the doctors uh, said that they were developing so rapidly there was nothing they could do. It was too late to do surgery. They, they said, we're sorry, but, <clears throat> but you're going to die. And they gave her some pain uh, medication to take. So she went to her church, and uh, the women's prayer group was, was meeting, and they prayed with her. And one of the women had a word of knowledge. She asked her, she said, have you ever cursed your own body? And the lady said, yes. She said, the men where I work are very vulgar. They're always uh, uh, making uh, dirty uh, sexual remarks about women and, and always making fun of my large breasts. And she said about six months before, she was so angry at those men that she went home from work and looked in the mirror and cursed her breasts. And immediately after that, she developed cancer in her breasts. You see, if you curse your body, you're inviting the devil to come and destroy your body. So the, the, the ladies had that, that woman forgive those men at work. The first step in ministry is forgiveness. And then to say, Heavenly Father, please forgive me for cursing my, my body, my breasts. I repent. I renounce those curses. And when she said that, immediately she felt a warmth from the Holy Spirit. And the tumors in her breast started dissolving. And in two weeks, they were all gone. Uh, I ministered one time to a, uh, a young woman in Mexico, and she had psoriasis, which is a skin disease. On the f she had it on her, all over her face. Her face was broken out in sores with this disease of psoriasis, and she had much pain in her face. And, and uh, as I was ministering to her, I asked her, have you ever cursed yourself? And she said, yes, that she had. She said she had two older sisters. She said they have fair skin and blue eyes. But she had dark skin and brown eyes. And her older sisters would torment her by saying, you are not the daughter of our father. And it made her very, very hurt, very sad. So she said she started going home and looking in the mirror and cursing her face. And then she started developing this psoriasis, this disease of the skin on her face, and had much pain in her face. So first I had her forgive her sisters for hurting her in this way, saying these words, repent for judging her sisters anyway, and then say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent for cursing my face, the color of my skin, I renounce those words. And immediately when she said that, uh, the pain left her face, and I'm sure that she was healed of the disease. I ministered recently in Colorado in a prison, and I, I gave this teaching, and a young man there, about maybe 25 or 30 years old, came up to me after the teaching. He was limping, and he said, uh, you know, I have to admit that I was born with a club foot that's a very, uh, an oversized foot that, that is not formed correctly. And he said, all my life I've hated my foot and I've cursed my club foot. And I, I led him to say, Heavenly Father, please forgive me for cursing my foot. I, re I repent, I renounce those curses, and I pray blessings on my foot. And, and he started walking away, and he ran back to me, and he said, he was laughing, and he said, did you see I'm not limping? He said, I don't know what happened, but he said, for the first time in my life, I'm walking without a limp. 
So in some fashion, God lengthened his leg or healed his foot in some fashion, and he, he, was, he was set free. But, but his heart was also set free from cursing himself, and this is very important. I recently ministered in a city in Mexico, and a, a man came up to me, and he said, uh, uh, he said, I have diabetes. And he said, I, he said I, I think I understand now why I have diabetes. He said, I've had it for six years. And I said, what happened? And he said, well, I, I was overweight. I was kind of fat. And he said, uh, I went to visit one of, my, one of my friends, and he was very thin. And I said, boy, you really look good. How come you're so thin? And he said, well, he said, I have diabetes, and I've lost a lot of weight. And this man said, well, I wish I would get diabetes. And shortly after that, he got diabetes. You see, people don't realize that we can be snared by the words of our mouth. And I've had other people tell me that they have said they wanted to get a certain sickness and they got that sickness. I mean, the devil takes, he, he's listening to trap people with their words. So I had that, that man ask God to forgive him for inviting that disease of diabetes into his, into his life. I had him say, I renounce diabetes. I renounce the curse I put on my life. I repent for saying those words and I prayed for healing. And of course, I, I don't know what happened. I did not, I did not see him any further. But I, I've ministered uh, a number of times to people who've, uh, to a man who cursed his hands and, and had terrible pain in his hands until he repented for cursing his hands, to another young woman who had cysts in her breasts, who had cursed her breasts because she thought they were too small, she wanted larger breasts, so I had her repent and renounce those, those curses. Uh, I had a woman who cursed her herself because she thought she was too fat, and she had constant pain in her back until she repented for cursing herself, and, and the back pain was healed. And, and then uh, it's also important if we make promises about ourself. Uh, I minister to people who've made the kind of promises. They, they've said, I'll always be poor. And sure enough, they were poor all their life. Don't, don't say things like that. You know, the devil traps us by our words. People sometimes say, I will never forgive myself. Well, you know, then you've trapped yourself in unforgiveness, and the devil can use that to, 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 cause, uh, to cause pain in your heart, to cause sickness, and, and all kinds of problems. You, you'll never have the relation with God and the victory in, in your Christian life until you accept God's forgiveness and until you forgive yourself. Sometimes people say, I will, you know, my, my father had cancer, my uncles had cancer, my grandfather had cancer, and I will have cancer. Well, if you say that, you will probably have cancer. If you've made that kind of statement, immediately say, Lord, forgive me. My father and et cetera had cancer. That was a generational curse. I don't accept that curse over my life. Uh, Galatians 3.13 says Christ became a curse for us and so by the authority of, of Christ who became a curse on the Christ, a cross, I break the curse of cancer over my life. I will not get cancer. I renounce that curse. Sometimes people say I'll never be able to get married. I'll always be lonely. I'll never trust anyone. Uh, my mother or father died young so I'm going to die young. If you've made those kind of statements, they are, they are inner vows. They are hooks that the devil can have in your life to bring curses on you. So immediately say, in the name of Jesus, I break and renounce all word curses that I have uh, spoken uh, over my own life. Now I want to lead you in a prayer for word curses. If someone has cursed you using God's name, if someone has said that you have called you stupid or worthless or a loser or said you'd be just like your father or, or whatever, whatever. If, if, if you've been listening to this teaching, then probably those words have come to your mind. Say, Lord, I forgive my father, my mother, my stepfather, whoever it was, my family that said those words. 
I repent for judging them, and by the authority of Christ, I break those word curses over my life. I don't accept that curse. I renounce that curse over my life. And then resist those words from now. Don't accept it. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's a promise of God. Now, have you ever cursed anyone else? Have you cursed your father or mother? Say, Heavenly Father, I realize that was a, a, a sin. I repent for cursing my father or mother. I forgive them. I honor them. I repent of all judgments against them. And I renounce all curses I've spoken against them. Have you ever cursed God? Say, Heavenly Father, please forgive me for cursing you. I thought you were my enemy. I was deceived by the devil. I repent. I renounce those curses I spoke against you. Have you ever made a promise or an agreement with the devil? Say, Heavenly Father, please forgive me for making a promise to the devil. I, I, I now know that he is my enemy, not my friend. I, I renounce those curses. I, I repent for saying those words. Please set me free and break the curse over my life. I renounce those promises I made to the devil. Have you ever cursed your own life? Have you ever uh, uh, cursed your own body? Something about your body that you didn't like or your mind? Say, Lord, please forgive me for cursing my body. Let, let, let me just add this little, this little teaching. I have ministered to, to women when they were born, their mother or father wanted a boy and rejected them as girls. They grew up and rejected themselves and cursed themselves as women. And sometimes women have had sicknesses of the, of the female parts or they've not been able to conceive children or to carry children to conception because of these self-curses. So if you've cursed yourself as a woman, say, Lord, I forgive my parents for rejecting me as a woman. I repent for cursing myself. I renounce those self-curses. I accept myself as I am. You're the creator, and I accept myself as you created me. Sometimes men have come to me and have said, they were rejected by their father or mother because they wanted a girl and they grew up and rejected themselves as men. And this was one of the roots of sicknesses or of their becoming homosexuals or of having homosexual temptations. Just say, Lord, I repent. Uh, I forgive my father and mother for rejecting my me as a male. I repent for, for rejecting myself as a man and cursing myself as a man. I renounce those words and those promises and those curses in Jesus' name. I renounce the spirit of homosexuality. I accept myself as you created me to be as a man in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to add another teaching on this tape, a teaching about, uh, uh, if I can find it here, Let's see which. Let's cut it for just a minute. Let me decide.